wake up your morning in a brand new way with the positive people, places, events, and things in and around your neighborhood and around the world. No matter where you live, your mornings are about to get better. It's the refreshing way to start your day. No doom or gloom, just bright sunshine no matter what the weather. Metro Magazine with Bonnie McDaniel. Inspiring, informative, intelligent, ION. Positively the best way to start your morning. Good morning and welcome to Metro Magazine. We have an exciting guest this morning, but when don't we have exciting guests, right? But you're going to love this young woman. She is, I'm still trying to figure out how, how old she is based <laughs> upon what she's done. And I'm looking at her and I'm thinking there's no way she's done all this stuff. But you're going to be very, very intrigued by the work that she's doing, uh, not only in the music industry, but in the community. This is an amazing young woman and I'm so honored and so blessed to have her share her story with you this morning Gina Rose yes welcome to Metro magazine my dear thank you for having me so I was just <laughs> saying to our viewers that there's no way you've done all this stuff and <laughs> and such a short because you can't be too that too old I'm because <laughs> yeah because looking at you and looking at your resume my gosh mm -hmm. this is like a lifetime worth of achievements here mm -hmm. So let's start out talking about, you, you grew up in the D.C. metro area. Yes. And uh, we were talking off camera. You said mm -hmm. that you have traveled different places. and yes. But you're back here and you're giving back in a big, big way. So mm -hmm. let's, we're going to get to your music. Let's talk about some of the things you're doing okay. uh, in the community to give back. Okay. Well, right now, um, I think the biggest thing for me is teaching. Okay. I am a music teacher. I okay. teach voice lessons. I mm -hmm. also teach early ed music classes. Mm -hmm. And just to be able to help young people, mm -hmm. you know, who have goals and they want to sing or they want to perform, mm -hmm. just to be that person, to push them in the right direction, mm -hmm. it, it, I can't even explain how I feel every mm -hmm. day. I now, just, I'm overwhelmed with, you know. And you're this. classically trained. So yes. talk about your, your educational background. Sure. Well, first, um, I went to Morgan State University. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to MSU. <laughs> I actually went there to study psychology. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. So I was there for a year. Uh -huh. um, I had to come home after the first year. I got pregnant with my son. Okay. So I came back, and I was just working a regular 9 to 5 job. And then mm -hmm. something said, okay, you need to go back to school. Mm -hmm. But go back to school for something that you really, really love. To. I love psychology psychology too, but mm -hmm. music was always a part mm -hmm. of my life. So mm -hmm. I went to UDC, the University of the District of Columbia, mm -hmm. and I decided to study classical voice. Never wow. ventured in that area before, and I knew it would be a challenge to me, mm -hmm. um, vocally and mm -hmm. mentally. So mm -hmm. I did. I pushed my way through, and I got my bachelor's in um, classical performance. Wow. Voice and performance. I... I I'm uh, mentioning this because one of the mm -hmm. things that the new president, you all just, uh, UDC just we got did. a new president. And one of yes. the things that really impressed me about him uh -huh. is that he came in with all guns blaring, <laughs> fighting for those students, for the yes. education and making sure that they were taken care of. So yes. talk to me about how important that is to you as a teacher. Mm. Uh, speak to that a little bit. Uh, it's very important to me, and going back to what you said about UDC, UDC has been going through so many years of mm -hmm. turmoil with presidents and mm -hmm. turnovers and, I mean, so many allegations and mm -hmm. just a lot of mm -hmm. messy, just messy, yeah, messy yeah. stuff going on. And finally, we're getting to a place, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not there anymore, but, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a definite advocate for it. Mm -hmm. Finally, they're getting to a place where, okay, we have some leadership in place. Mm -hmm. Everybody's coming together, mm -hmm. working together to make the campus, you know, mm -hmm. even um, the look of the campus. Mm -hmm. Tom Joyner was just there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's beautiful to mm -hmm. me. I'm happy mm -hmm. and I'm proud. And as a teacher now, I appreciate my professors even more mm -hmm. for what they did for me. Mm -hmm. So that's all I try to instill into my students is the same that they've, they've given to me. And you know, you bring up an interesting point. You're talking about building, uh, whether it be an educational campus or, mm. or work in the community, it really does right. start with the people that oh, are involved yes. and their commitment to making right. sure that, the, that excellence Right. is the level that they are trying to achieve and right. not just looking at it as any old kind of thing and it doesn't matter because it right. matters a great deal. Oh, it does. Uh, especially For when sure. I look at someone like yourself, even though you were there, mm -hmm. I assume you were attending during those tumultuous times oh, yes. at school. Uh, yes. But you came out with a, with a sense, I gather, from talking to you that, mm -hmm. you know, 
I have a responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that I do my part in whatever space I occupy here on this oh, earth. Yes. So that's a very, very good thing. So yes. let's let's talk about the age group of children that you work with. Okay. So talk about them. Um, well, in my early ed music classes, um, mm -hmm. I teach what, what people say, how can you teach uh, zero months, you know, to three years old? But babies and toddlers, they listen and they They're pay sponges. attention. Mm -hmm. They are. They are total sponges mm -hmm. and repetition is a big thing with them. So mm -hmm. I work with um, little infants, babies. Of course, parents are there, mm -hmm. but um, repetition when I teach the classes. Now, I do this, the same that's thing interesting. Over over. So these are classes that are designed for that age group that yes. you do privately, or is this part of a, a It's part a of a formal... music school. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, it's Bach to Rock Music School and they're okay. franchised all over the US. And I work in Bethesda, the Bethesda okay. um, location. But yes, we have different programs for different age groups. Mm -hmm. So those are the early ed or like zero to um, three. Mm -hmm. Then we have another one I teach, which is three to five. Mm -hmm. And that I teach them about different instruments. I teach mm -hmm. them basic, basic music theory, mm -hmm. but I'm very repetitive. I teach mm -hmm. them the same thing every week so that they get it mm -hmm. and they know everything that I put on the board. Okay. And then from there, I teach, um, you know, I would say probably nine to adults. Mm -hmm. I teach the private voice lessons. Okay. So okay. that's where I really get into my zone and, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I, I'm Do sitting here listening to you talk about uh, children being sponges and mm -hmm. and that that zero to three years old. They really do <laughs> grasp it because what they you do. reminded me of was this this car trip from you know where uh -huh. in the car with my daughter. And she had this country kids tape that someone had given her or a CD someone uh -huh. had given her and me singing for 1300 <laughs> miles the same, the same thing. And I thought, Lord, if you just get me out of this car, like <laughs> right now, I'll never do this again. So right. they do grasp yes, they the, do. the whole concept of music. And they actually do. music, I'm, I'm thinking back to, again, to my children. I remember mm -hmm. uh, with my son, mm -hmm. he learned his introduction to French was through music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. songs that were sung and in, in French right and it's an right. easy way to grasp the language if you will so, it is yeah it is. music yeah. is powerful it really People is don't understand. it really is it and is now talking about yourself so you do mm -hmm. have somewhat of a connection because I read in your bio mm -hmm. that you actually started singing at three years old yes so talk about that. <laughs> well, of course, I don't really remember, but my family remembers. Mm -hmm. um, I've just been singing forever since I was little. My mom said I just used to sing whatever came on the radio in the mm -hmm. car, and I'd just mm -hmm. be singing and singing. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I was in kindergarten, I actually led the kindergarten graduation in the ABCs. I was like conducting, and <laughs> it was crazy. So I remember that um, when I was younger, my aunt. She always would have people over in the house in Massachusetts, and she'd be like, sing, sing, sing. She always wanted me to sing Vesta's Congratulations. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember, but I used to sing that all the time. Okay. So I, music was just a part of me. Okay. And my mother, she can't sing. Okay. <laughs> Nobody in my immediate family can sing. So, so you don't know where they get passed came down. From? No. Okay. It's been probably somebody, <laughs> somebody in the family down the line. somewhere right. had right. that amazing voice and they're like, okay, we're going to pin this on her. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So what is it about music that inspires you? <sighs> to me, music just, it speaks to everyone mm -hmm. in any situation that mm -hmm. you're going through. You mm -hmm. turn on a song and it's going to speak to you. Mm -hmm. It's just going to speak to you. Songs can put you back in a place and a time that you were before. Just music is just is everything mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I could not see myself just not doing anything with mm -hmm. music. I, ha mm -hmm. I have to. Mm -hmm. It's a part of me. And it's just music is just. Is universal. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, you're, you're it's, absolutely it's very right. I was yeah. um, interviewing, I guess, for the past maybe four or five, six shows that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. They've all been focused on uh, people who are in your business, mm -hmm. and um, they've been different. There have been different genres of music, and mm -hmm. one of the you probably, I'm sure you know, Chris Styles Bacon. Yes, uh, I know. Of, yes, yes. Okay, yes. he was here um, with a couple of. Uh, uh, contemporaries from Brazil nice. and one of the things they talked about the commonality it had mm -hmm. to do with vibration mm. and I think that's perhaps what the underlying thing is that a lot of people don't recognize mm -hmm. is the vibrations connect people it connects True. something internally perhaps True. Right. that we don't even 
aren't able able to identify, right. but we know it right. when we feel it, and right. it, it kind of brings people together. So it's, I, I it's believe, a very I interesting believe that. Concept. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. I so agree. listen, we're going to take a quick break. You okay. Can get a sip of water, <laughs> okay. and we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about your amazing career. Okay. So sit cool. back just for a moment. We're going to take a quick break and be right back with more Metro Magazine. Mm. Queen Bee is a book about um, some of the habits, some of the things that we women do really to undermine ourselves and undermine other women and it's something that we really can't afford to do any longer. It's actually a book that um, is a combination of research that I've done interviewing other women and men about what is it that has kept us over the, the years from becoming the empowered women that we say we are. There are some amazing women out there who have amazing uh, educational backgrounds, have positions of power, and we can really make an impact by simply examining, looking at ourselves first of all, looking at women that we are really blessed to have relationships with, with those young women who, who are brought to us to, to be able to mentor or to, to be their bosses. And I want women to finally have that tough conversation with themselves and with other women about how we can change our behavior so that we can finally become empowered. And welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're here with the amazing Gina Rose, who was just telling us a little bit about her career and how she came to be, basically. And so, Gina, when we went mm -hmm. to break, uh, we were going to circle back and begin mm -hmm. to talk about your music career. So okay. you had mentioned earlier that you went to UDC, you studied music. Mm -hmm. So while you were in college, mm -hmm. were you performing or is this something that happened uh, after the fact? Oh, gosh. I've been performing way before I even got to UDC. Okay. But in, in church or Oh, yeah. Started stage? in church. Okay. For sure. Definitely started in church. Okay. Um, and just from there, I just had a moment. Um, actually, when I came back from Morgan, mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I need to really just get out there. Mm -hmm. And my first goal was, you know what? I just want to get my name in people's mouths. So tell me That's your first experience. First experience? Oh, gosh. Um talent contest you know um <laughs> and was it a talent, talent local showcase. or yes okay it was local is actually at the aqua club which is still around okay. in dc and um oh my gosh there's just different performers and you know i just got up there and did you win i don't even know what no i didn't win that okay didn't win that but i met a lot of people and okay. then from there I just networked and did a whole bunch of showcases and okay. my name started circulating so that was my main goal in mm -hmm. the beginning mm -hmm. yeah so so when was <laughs> when, when was your first big break my first big break oh my god where you <sighs> went and or maybe you auditioned for something or you were called for something and it was a name that everybody recognized what was it <laughs> Uh, it would have to be Apollo. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so I did see that in your yes. bio that you went to the Apollo. So talk yeah. to us. What was that like? Okay, so I've had uh, two experiences with the Apollo. The mm -hmm. first was the um, older version, Showtime at the Apollo. Right. Um, so I went to Where an they audition they boo you off that. if you're not good? Yes. Oh, they <laughs> still do. But yes. <laughs> that was the first one. They had auditions here in D.C. I okay. went, prayed about it. I went. And oh my gosh, I got called to do it. They said I was I was going to New York. I was so excited. My whole uh -huh. family went up, um, you know, and I went on and I sang. Um, oh gosh, what did I sing? Shaka Khan song. Um, I'm every woman. Okay, so you're gonna have to give me a couple of bars. You know that, right? <laughs> oh my right? gosh, I can cast a spell. Secret you can tell. Mix a special group. Put fire inside of you. Anytime you feel danger or fear, instantly I will appear cause I'm every woman. It's all in me. So And you yeah. did that on cue. <laughs> I, I love it. I love, so did you win? No. <laughs> 
they didn't, they didn't boo you off. They though, right? didn't boo me. Okay, that was good. my. I said when I rubbed that because you have to rub the wood. <laughs> if you don't, they'll boo you for that. So I said, please don't let me get booed. That was all <laughs> I wanted, and I didn't get booed. I got okay, a great okay. response though, so I was super proud of that. That was great accomplishment. <laughs> that was great. And yeah. then it came back around. They started the new one, Apollo okay. Live, okay. which has Gladys. They have judges now, Gladys Knight, okay. Dougie Fresh, and um, Michael Bivens. Oh, wow. Tough, tough judges. Tough, tough judges. Serious judges. Okay. Um, again, they had an audition here. Not many people really knew about this audition. My aunt happened to hear it on the radio. She called me. I said, okay. I went and got picked right away mm -hmm. and went back to New York <laughs> again and same thing went up there i didn't sing the same song i sang mm -hmm. um oh gosh anita baker song um they made me switch my song at the last minute okay so, so that kind of turned me around um sweet love okay so you have to do a couple of bars oh my gosh oh goodness you know we, uh, we put you on the hot seat when I you know. come to metro magazine so oh you better goodness. show up ready let's see um with all my heart i love you baby stay with me and you will see my arms will hold you, baby. Stay with me, cause baby, I believe in this love, sweet love. Yes, yeah, so. Very good. <laughs> okay, I'm impressed. I'm oh, impressed. So did you, you win that time? No, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Good practice, say, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. But I will say on that one, as far as the clapping and the judging, I have very good feedback from all the judges, which okay. I am greatly appreciative of. Thank you, judges. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the audience um, gave me really, really good response. So out of mm -hmm. my group, I probably say I would, I would have, um, I came in like second. Okay. That's good. I would say that was good. That's as impressive. far as the applause, because you still win by applause, no right. matter what the judges say. Okay. So, yeah, that was it was impressive. close. It was close. You know, I have to tell you, um, I was <laughs> talking to the executive producer of the show this morning mm -hmm. and Chaka Khan and Cool and the Gang are coming to Ugh. Wolf Trap next weekend. So, oh, next weekend. So if there are any people out there tweeting oh or or whatever, <laughs> yes. I will be the one barefoot. <laughs> Dancing in the aisles because I love Chaka oh Khan. So when you I said that, I was too. like, oh my gosh, yeah, she's. I love Chaka. That woman is just. She's amazing. She really is. She's one she of my really inspirations is. musically. Yeah, yeah. I, and I she love looks her. really, really good. She looks great. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. So, yeah. Yes. So I can't, the 30th? Oh, Wolf Trap, I oh, will be there. Man. Yeah. Oh my goodness. How That's crazy would it be if you showed up and said, hey, I did one of your songs at the Apollo? <laughs> And she allowed you to come up with her. I you, would like. I mean, you could dream, right? I could dream. I would shake, but I would get up there and sing, though. I sure would. Oh, my I sure gosh. would. Yeah. So you got your first breaks, I That's would say, because there were two at the yeah. Apollo. So what was the next one? Um, Outside of that, um, hmm, it's been a, a couple. Mm -hmm. um, musically, I'm not. Well, I will say that one of my two of my songs were actually placed on the Wu Tang. Um, they had a mixtape, mm -hmm. their first R and B mixtape. So these are songs that, that you wrote because you're a writer too. Yes. Okay. Two, what two were they, my original those songs? songs? Um, which ones? Oh my goodness. Oh goodness. Feel so good. Mm -hmm. um, and dark to light. Okay. They were two of my songs. I read the dark to light. What? What's the uh, genesis of that? What's the background of that song? Mm -hmm. um, that song is actually co-written by me and a producer I work with. Uh, so much in Jersey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, his name is Shai Salam. Okay. And he wrote a little bit and I wrote a lot um, of the song too. Mm -hmm. And we just collabed and put it together. It's basically just a story about whatever you do mm -hmm. that is wrong, that's dirty, it's going to come to light. Mm -hmm. You know, some kind of way is going to come back. The universe is going to bring it back to you okay. in some kind of way. Okay. So that's pretty much what Dark to Light oh, is wow. about. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah. And you said you got mentioned for the uh, being the writer, one um, of the writers for that uh, with the, for uh, that song, not for Dark to Light, mm -hmm. um, but for another song, I got men a mention from Billboard for mm -hmm. my song, um, Never Shoulda, mm -hmm. which was big. It was a songwriting contest, and mm -hmm. I, I just sent it in, entered, and they gave me... Um, Who sang that? Me. Oh, you did? Okay, so you know you're <laughs> going to have to just do a couple of bars, oh, right? Oh, my goodness. You're bringing me back to all these songs. Hey. Oh, my goodness. Um, goodness, Never Shoulda. Oh, gosh. I know it's never should have said I didn't want you around. 
Um, oh my gosh, I can't really remember all of it. Okay. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen that in years. It's okay. You really put me on the spot. I'll put you on the spot for another one. It's all right. All right. <laughs> It's not a problem. <laughs> so you uh, did Billboard, and mm -hmm. I noticed that you work with a lot of very well-known artists. You, you mentioned mm -hmm. Wu-Tang. Now, talk about some of the other yeah. artists. Perhaps one that you just, when you got word that you were going to be able to work with them, you just lost <laughs> your mind completely. Um, Cece Peniston. Ah, uh, okay. Cece and why? Peniston. Why Cece? Um, well, first of all, I've always loved Cece's music. Mm -hmm. um, always loved her as an artist. Mm -hmm. And... Um, out of all her songs, her song, um, her ballad just always spoke to me. Mm -hmm. So I decided to redo her song. Okay. Inside that, I cried. Okay. I re recorded it. Um, one of her really close friends from this area actually heard my remake mm -hmm. and sent it to her. And she reached out to me on Facebook. Oh, wow. The power of social media. Yeah, people. I love Facebook Some, most <laughs> times. Sometimes you get these weirdos yeah. that's like, where did you come yeah, from? Yeah, because know, I wasn't but... sure. I was like, is this really Cece? <laughs> <laughs> Sending me a long message on Facebook. Yeah. But she told me she loved the remake and um, just a lot of different things we talked about. She okay. was very encouraging to me and what I was trying to do. And I was like, okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So then, you know, going on. I get to work with a really cool band, Wildflower Band, mm -hmm. uh, at a Congressional Black Caucus event. Okay. And who are we backing? Cece Peniston. I love I it. I said, oh my gosh. So yeah, that was the first time I got to meet her. Yeah, yeah, in person. And from there, whenever she's in town now, I'm singing background for her. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Cece, I love you. She is a sweetheart. Oh she, gosh. she definitely is. So she on the West sweetheart. Coast? She's actually in Arizona. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, but Beautiful she's everywhere country. all the okay. time. Yeah. Wow. Now, you know, um, here comes the spot again. So you did a ballad by her. And I did. So here we go. Okay. Inside that I cried. Hmm. The talks we had on stormy nights, I often rushed away. When you were not in common sight, I was held by his embrace. I gaze and see the pain you feel to think we have to part. I didn't feel you loved me, so I played games with your heart. It was inside that I cried. It was inside that I cried. No long drawn out speeches. No saddest of goodbyes. It was inside that I cried. It was inside that I cried. Don't be deceived by what you saw. It was inside that I cried. Wow. Oh my very, gosh. very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> no problem. Now, Thank you. I have to tell you, I'm a church girl, which yeah. means I talked to you again off camera and you mm -hmm. were talking about your singing in church. Talk to me about that. Yes. So, um, a member of Union Temple Baptist mm -hmm. Church in mm -hmm. Southeast Washington, D.C. Okay. And um, my gosh, I've been, I was singing in the youth choir for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, love my church. Mm -hmm. And out of that, we actually got to sing background for a lot of artists. Boys okay. to Men, Reba McIntyre, oh, wow. um, my God, so many different artists. So mm -hmm. getting that experience at a young age was just mm -hmm. such a blessing to me. Mm -hmm. um, and shout out to Pastor Wilson, Sister Wilson, I love you all. You know, wow. especially Sister Wilson too, because she really pushed me vocally too. I mm -hmm. thought I was an alto, and one day she was like, why are you in this section? Get over to the soprano <laughs> section. So she pushed yeah, me. You have a beautiful soprano voice. Thank you. She yeah. pushed me, I was trying to stay comfortable, and you know, but mm -hmm. she really pushed me outside of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate her and love her to death for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was definitely the start, you okay. know, So you said you all did background for... We boys. did. Was this on gospel or Christmas? No, it was actually um, just different events because okay. the choir, the youth choir itself, actually put out an album right Got before it. I joined. Mm -hmm. um, and so from that, they were getting... So Got much attention. Got yeah. a lot of calls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kirk Franklin, we backed him. Oh, I love him. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we've yeah. done some awesome things. What I want to really get 
in the groove and start <laughs> cleaning or doing something that requires yes. a lot of energy. Oh, his I music put is on awesome. Stomp or, or whatever. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because it's going to get done. Yes. Yeah, he's yes. A, what an amazing, he's amazing. artist. Artist, he is. songwriter. Very, very talented. Awesome. And he works across so many different he, genres. He I does. was listening to um, him with, oh gosh, the, the, uh, ah, the group just went out of my out of my head, but it's a ca Caucasian group, and they brought uh -huh. him in and blended his his uh, oh, rap, my and it was just wow. That's yeah. awesome. So, yeah, he's uh, amazing. Yeah, he really is, and he's he been is. what a huge impact he's had. He has on the, the music whole industry. industry, gospel. Yeah. He's changed a lot. You yeah. know, opened the door too he for really a lot did. of contemporary um, gospel mm -hmm. artists. So yeah, mm -hmm. he's amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so let me ask you, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to put you on the spot again. <laughs> what is one of your favorite gospel songs that you've done in church? And can you give me a couple of bars? Ah! <laughs> favorite gospel song. I would probably have to say His Eyes on the Sparrow. Okay. Um, I've always sang that. I, that's one of up. my faves. Yeah. 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 So, oh, goodness. Let me see. Why should I feel discouraged and why should the shadows come and why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when jesus is my portion a constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Wow, wow, wow. I love, I love that song. Yeah. I love yeah. that song. And you know, <laughs> the fact that you have that foundation, I'm sure mm. that it carries you through those it does. bumpy spots that all of us hit at different times. It does. And I find mm -hmm. that music, you, we, we were talking earlier, you were talking mm -hmm. about the, the, how it transcends, you know, different cultures, right. you know, ethnic, ethnicities. Right. Uh, I look at music as a healing Force. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and healing Absolutely. comes in the form of laughter or sure. enduring sadness mm -hmm. or times of contemplation. It's healing right. and helping you to get from those places. Right. Yeah, to oh. help you to get there whole, really. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, okay, so now true. you have a lot of things that you're doing in the community, in addition to the fact that you're teaching music. Mm -hmm. I, I want to talk about that. We're going to take a quick break. Okay. We're going to come back because you're doing some great things, and I want you to share with our audience uh, some of the things that you're doing. So we're going to okay. take another quick break, and we'll be right back with more Metro Magazine and Gina Rose. <laughs> Up to 40% of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov slash business. Gina, when we went to last, uh, the last break, we were mm -hmm. beginning to talk about some of your giving back in the community. So I really mm -hmm. want to explore that a moment because I'm hoping that people who are watching, especially young people, mm -hmm. it's important for me to use my platform to mm. encourage them and instill the, the, the idea that giving back is how you get mm -hmm. all that you get in life. So let, let's talk about that for a minute, True. some of the things that you're doing. Um, some of the things I'm doing, like again, is with children. Mm -hmm. um, even though I work and I teach out of school, mm -hmm. I do do things outside of that for okay. parents that I know really can't afford to go to the school and pay that type of money for mm -hmm. lessons. So I do some some private lessons mm -hmm. at my home. Mm -hmm. um, I had, for example, one little boy, he was a sweetheart, and he got the role of um, the Scarecrow uh -huh. and the Wiz at uh -huh. his school. And, you know, one of my friends reached out and said, you know, his mom really wants him to just get a little better at his role. So I definitely took time out mm -hmm. and helped him for uh, quite a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And we worked on everything, stage presence, his movements. And mm -hmm. so my whole thing is, is a lot with the children. Mm -hmm. um, with my son and his friends, you know, mm -hmm. they come to me for advice. I give it. Um, Does your I'm son just, sing? He does. 
Ah, so my son okay. Is 13. Okay. Um, he sings. He's also now taking drum lessons. Okay. Um, I had him in piano before. Uh -huh. Um, but now he's gravitated towards the drums. I was like, fine. You know, I'm not so gonna push you. So you're giving him that foundation. He has it. He's used to it though. Okay. He's so used to being tugged along the shows and you know since he was little with me, so he's uh -huh. so used to it. And you know, yeah. it's good he doesn't resent it. You know he that doesn't. he's taking you know it, yes. it, it on as his own. Yeah, uh, which is pretty cool. It's is is very cool. cool. And, you, you know, one <laughs> of the things in listening to you talk about you volunteering or donating mm -hmm. your time to yes. children who can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that that I also find a little bit troubling is the lack of support for the arts mm. um, in schools and, yes. and how that's taking away the creativity mm. um, because music the arts in general help to build confidence in children. They do. They so, do. so talk about that. If you had a platform where you could talk to people who were in control, talk about why that's important and what's, what are some of the creative ways, if you will, that they can uh, perhaps pay more attention to that. Um, gosh, first of all, taking the arts from the schools is just, it's a no-no. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. There's too much creativity in some mm -hmm. of these kids. And sometimes children are lashing out because mm -hmm. they don't have an outlet. And mm -hmm. maybe that's what they need. They need music. They need to play an instrument. They need mm -hmm. to get on a microphone. Mm -hmm. They need to act. Mm -hmm. So arts is super, super important. Mm -hmm. And especially for the parents mm -hmm. of children, don't discourage them. Mm -hmm. You know, don't shoot it down and say, oh, you're not going to do anything. And that's not a real career. Mm -hmm. That, you know... I, I, I hear that all the time. Not mm. from my mother. My mother mm -hmm. has always been super supportive. She's mm -hmm. always been there mm -hmm. and pushed me. Um, never deterred me from being a singer or mm -hmm. a performer. But just encourage them and let them explore. Mm -hmm. You know, at this young age or young ages, let them explore mm -hmm. and figure it out. If music is their thing, encourage them. Mm -hmm. Go to their shows. Mm -hmm. You know, sit down and listen to them. Write a song with them. Help right. them listen to whatever they wrote. Mm -hmm. um, it's a major thing. Mm -hmm. It's a major thing to me. I, I feel like support is the number one thing, mm -hmm. especially from the adults. Mm -hmm. We have to be very open to our children and to the children around us, not just our own children, but mm -hmm. the children in the community too. Mm -hmm. So, You bring up an interesting point. I know, I know several physicians and their hobbies, the things that they do as outlets, mm -hmm. each one of them indulge in music. They play drums. They, one That's of right. them uh, plays a trumpet. Uh, one of them <laughs> likes to, what, do you, what is that thing, a synth Piano? synthesizer that they work with to... Okay, on the boards. Yeah, okay. yeah, but I, they like, like music, engineer. so it must be the same side of the brain mm -hmm. that helps you to become a physician. Use the same side of the brain because That's each crazy. one of them has music as an outlet. That's so if you amazing. do the reverse of that, uh -huh. people who are interested in music, it's not to say that they're going to go off and right. you know be going to little road shows of exactly. doing stuff that people who don't make it big in the music right. do, and the music right. business do. Perhaps this is a, a way for them to turn on that side of their brain. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, um, yes. now... Talk about other recordings. Do you have a new project or anything that you're working on? Um, I am. I'm going to be working on a new single um, very mm -hmm. soon. Okay. Um, as of right now, I still have my EP out, which I actually brought you a copy. Okay. Pow. It's called The Times. Okay. Um, and it has the CC remake on there and, and some other um, original songs. Okay. Um, but the EP was just, you know, a Here project I wanted to <laughs> put out. Um, just because people have been asking me for so long, when are you going to mm -hmm. put something out? And I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? Let me put an EP out. It's okay. short, you know, a couple of songs to get them ready for some more. So Now, you know what? Yeah. You just threw something at me, and I don't know everything, and I, I have no problem saying I don't know something. Tell me EP. Because when I think of EP, oh, of course, EPK is in electronic press. Here. What's EP? Um, extended play. So ah. it's a shorter um, length, not a full length or LP of the album. Okay. Just a shorter um, project. Okay. So it could be three songs, five songs, just a couple. So that's different than a single. Single is a single. And then yes. if you want more, then it's an EP. And then yes. you go to a full length. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just learned something this morning, y'all. And I've been, <laughs> I think I know a lot about music. Well, you know, you don't know everything at any moment. So I just learned learning. something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that. Sure. So you know what I'm, I'm interested in? And you don't need to tell me if, if you don't uh, want to. Gina Rose. Is Rose really your last name or is this a stage name? 
<laughs> I said, you know, I love the name Gina Rose. I mean, who can't be, who wouldn't be famous with a name like that? It sounds like that music. Is funny. Um, Rose is a part of my name. It's my middle name. Okay. Um, a lot of people think it's my last name. No, it's not. But the Rose is actually a part of my family's history. It's my grandma's middle name, my mom's middle name, ah. my middle name, my little cousin Taylor Rose is her. So it's been passed down. Taylor Rose. Okay. Taylor See, Rose. if I could have some more babies, that would be my <laughs> next daughter's name. Hi, Taylor. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so pretty. Yes. Taylor Rose. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful, I love yeah. Gina Rose too. Yeah. Taylor Rose is beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yes. And our grandfather is actually named Taylor. So that's kind of how they named her after that. Taylor. Rose. So your family really does honor. We do. Yeah. We do honor yeah. The your Rose. heritage. We're trying to keep yeah. it going. Rose is just, it sounds melodic. Uh, just when I saw the name, <laughs> Gina Rose. Oh my gosh. What a pretty name. So, <laughs> okay. You. So I got that out of the way. So yeah. we're, you're talking about your new single. You have a one that you're working on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any artists, other artists that are involved? Um, not yet. We're still in the creative process. Mm -hmm. Um, just trying to think of what direction I want to go in. Mm -hmm. Do I want to do another ballad or do I want to do an up-tempo type of a song? So I'm still thinking okay. about what direction I want to go in for the okay. next single. Okay. Yeah. So if you have to, had an opportunity, I'm sure you dream all the time. <laughs> uh, creative people normally do. They always you imagine do. themselves, uh, doing whatever. <laughs> so what would that dream project look like for you? Oh my gosh. It could be... Who would you like to perform with? Or uh, maybe you're performing by yourself. Talk talk about that dream project. Because you put it out there, you never know. I like did. the ballad? I did. Okay. Um, gosh, there are so many artists I would love to work with. Okay. Like my gosh. Um, hmm. Who would I well so many have passed to, which, mm. you know, I really miss, like a Tina Marie and like oh, yeah, a Michael. She was, like yeah. they you, they were just classics, mm -hmm. you know. Um I would have loved to work with them. Um, now, I don't know. There's so many different um, genres that I love. Mm -hmm. So I don't just stay with R&B. You know, right, I'm, right. I'm all over the board. So mm -hmm. I'm open to working with anybody out there that mm -hmm. loves real music, um, lyrics that mean something mm -hmm. that's big to me, mm -hmm. um, that tell a story. Um, so I'm definitely open to working with anybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, going on tour or you know, I'm just, I'm deaf. I'm just a sponge. I'm open okay, right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because uh, again, when you put it out there, you never know who's watching. That's true. Uh, who might have projects that are coming up. Um, really true. one of the other things I wanted to, to talk to you about, uh, just for a moment, if you will, mm -hmm. you have, um, work with different artists and has there ever been a time when you have gone and worked on a project, and this is going to get a little bit personal, Sure. Um, where you're like, oh, God, why am I here? And I can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to name the person, but you can kind of name this. Talk about the situation without giving away who the person is. Because music is a tough business. It, it is and a tough business. And some of the people in music, they're real divas. Or what do you call the guys? <laughs> Devos. Devos <laughs> who just is like, oh my gosh, yeah. why am I here? Talk um, about that. Because this is important for people okay. who are looking to go into music. It I, happens. Okay. I have an example. I won't say her name. Right. Um, she is a major artist. Um, and I had to do a theater um, um, show. Mm -hmm. It was a theatrical show. And she was the headliner of the show. And, you know, we had... All of us students have been rehearsing, rehearsing, waiting for her to come. And we were so excited to meet her. And she just came in and she was just really nasty and just, mm. you know, standoffish and just didn't want to talk to us. And we are, you know, teenagers and mm -hmm. we were just like, oh, my God, we get to be on a big show with this artist. And she just came in and her attitude was just so sour and just mm. so mean. Mm -hmm. And just like, why is your spirit like that? Mm. You know, so... That really kind of, that kind of just turned me off from her. Mm -hmm. She's an awesome singer, awesome vocalist. I won't deny that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, her, her attitude was just really nasty. And what do you think happens you know. to people um, who wind up in that place? Because I have, mm. quite honestly, being in the business that, that I'm in, right. um, I have been in the company of other people who do similar types of work that I do. Mm -hmm. And I always make it a point to be engaging with, with people who, mm. they come to me and say, hey, you know, right. can I do whatever? Can I take a picture with you? And yeah, I, right. you know, I'm, I try to be as gracious as possible, but then I've watched the behavior mm. of some of the other people and the mm -hmm. way they treat people. Why, why do you mm. think people get to that point? You, 
you know, they, I'm, I think maybe, yes, they've had a lot of letdowns in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, people have burned them or, mm-hmm. you know, done things behind their back or used mm-hmm. them. But still, even with all of that, you mm-hmm. shouldn't take it out on the people or your fans. Right. You know, the people who love you, you should always take a minute to stop. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that are watching you, supporting mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. buying your music, um, mm-hmm. you know, coming to your concert or your shows. Mm-hmm. So you should always take a minute to mm-hmm. stop and take that picture. Mm-hmm. I see that all the time, too, with celebrities. They're just mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't have time. Like, mm-hmm. what do you mean you don't have time? Mm-hmm. But I bought your album, you yeah, know? Yeah. I mean, I'm paying like 70 80 100 dollars to come see you in a concert Mm -hmm. you know take a minute out of your time to Mm -hmm. do that Mm -hmm. so i feel that's super important yeah yeah Yeah. i don't i don't like that when artists personalities Mm -hmm. when they act like that it's just it'll always leave a bad taste in your mouth about that person right right. you know and then word spreads word Mm -hmm. of mouth oh Mm -hmm. my god you're going to see that person Mm -hmm. you don't want that you know, you and you know what? That. Ultimately, your your legacy or mm. your platform or whatever is built on whatever imprint you leave everywhere you go. Yes. And if you're leaving that negative imprint, yeah. Uh, we were talking earlier, I think maybe off camera, about things about the song you were uh, mm-hmm. dark to light. Yeah. How it eventually it does make a, a circle. And it, it does come does. back to you. It so, does. Your yeah. attitude, everything. And I always say too, this music business is very small. Mm-hmm. It's very small. Even in this area, it's a very small community. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. everybody knows everybody in mm-hmm. some kind of way. And I always make it a point to make sure that I just, even if I don't work with someone again, or you know, I never burn a bridge mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you never know how the person gonna come back. So you, you I really always don't. try to stay in good graces with everybody. And mm-hmm. if Gina Rose comes out of somebody's mouth, oh yeah, you know, a mm-hmm. good comment or something mm-hmm. will come out. Yeah. So I always try to make sure I stay in the goods with people. Yeah, and you mm-hmm. know, because ultimately you are going to run into people who rub you the wrong way, yes. who don't <laughs> do right by you. Yes. But you know, I've always said to my children that you know. Uh, if, if it's time to make an exit, make an exit, but do so in a gracious mm. way. So in case you have that. to enter that. that door again. Yes, I love that. Yeah, because you yes. never know what people are going through you or don't. why they might it's, have yes. responded to you exactly. in a certain way at a certain time. Right. And you know, at the end of the day, we're all growing. Yes. Not all of us or none of us are in the same place. Right, right. Uh, some of us are trying to get to that place where we can just kind of let, be like that duck and let <laughs> things roll off our backs. Right. But not everyone is there. Right. So it's, it's a very important thing. Right. Um, now I want to uh, segue into another part of your life because okay. you were talking about your trip to uh, Africa. I asked mm. you if you traveled abroad and you said yes. And I yeah. want you to talk about that experience when we come back, we're going okay. to take another quick break, okay. and we're going to come back, and I want to talk about your journey to okay. the motherland. Okay. <laughs> and we'll be right back with more Metro Magazine. Up to 40% of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov business. Gina Rose, when we went to break, we were mm-hmm. going to start uh, talking a little bit about your journey to the motherland. Talk mm. about that and share that experience, if you will. Okay. Um, my church, Union Temple Baptist Church, they mm-hmm. have um, two programs, the mm-hmm. Womanhood Training Program mm-hmm. and the Manhood um, Training Program. And what, what is, talk, talk a little bit about what that program comprises. Sure. The program um, takes in a couple, well, my program takes in a couple of girls at a time, and all the girls teenage um, age, you know, um, Mm -hmm. girls. We all get assigned mentor, which are women in the church as Mm -hmm. well. And they're kind of like our shadow. They Mm -hmm. stay on us. We had different workshops we had to go to every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, What kind of workshops? Um, About life, um, a lot of reading. We had book assignments. Mm -hmm. Um, We also went out, not sure what part of Virginia, but they took us out to Virginia where we really had to we had to give everything away. No sodas, no, 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 candy, <laughs> no cell phones, no cell phones, oh, nothing. Gosh. Torture. We, it was a little bit, we were a little shocked. Um, but you know, it really this brought This is when us, you were going through oh, the yeah. program. Okay. Yes. This is when I was going through, um, my gosh, we had to learn how to cook, um, you mm-hmm. know, um, and then the, the craziest part at the end was 
they were trying to bring us back to really remember where we came from and where mm. our people, um, you know, came from in our struggle. And we, it was nighttime and they put us outside and we had to be on the Underground Railroad. Oh, wow. Outside, it was cold, um, you know, in the woods. We were crying, you know, but we had to get through the trail. You know, we had, mm-hmm. to, we had to really try to envision and feel what, you know, all mm-hmm. our people felt. And Harriet Tubman, of course. So, so who, activities who like this, that. Who put this program together? Is this something that... The is church, this... um, the women's ministry, um, okay. and the men's ministry, too, because they have one for um, the boys as well. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, we had to do lots of things like that. What did um, that do for you when you were connected to your your heritage in that in such a way um i think it grounded me a little better than the people that i knew that didn't go to church um you know my was friends it about at school church, was it about the spiritual journey or about the human experience as it had both. to do okay it's both it okay. was both um you definitely had to have your spiritual spirituality um at all times our mm-hmm. people did back in the day how could mm-hmm. they how could they not to right. get through everything that they went through mm-hmm. to get us to a place where we are today mm-hmm. so that was definitely a big factor mm-hmm. um but just in general understanding you know where we came from um mm-hmm. it it was it was a major impact on my life mm-hmm. um in what way in what way that um Having a mentor at first, I was a little reluctant, you know, to my mentor, I would say. Um, I just didn't want to be bothered. You know, I was in the program. Typical teenage teenage thing. thing. I just didn't, I didn't want to be bothered with someone calling me every day, you know, checking on me. And I'm just like, what's going on? How long did this go on? Oh my goodness. This was like two years. Ah, I like that. It was a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, it It was a long time. But after, you know, everything I love her and she's like best friends with my mom. Like they pray mm-hmm. together every morning on the phone mm-hmm. and I see her, you know, when I can see her, but mm-hmm. she's, she's like another mother to me wow. now. Wow. But at the time I just, I didn't really understand, you know, <laughs> what's like, going on bothering me. Yeah. But I yeah. love her to death. And now, mm-hmm. now I understand why all the women took time out of their lives mm-hmm. to mentor the children that weren't their children. Mm-hmm. You know, they mm-hmm. took the time out to teach us and to be with us and, mm-hmm. um, grow with us Mm -hmm. you know so and you know you you bring up an interesting point because um i'm a mentor and have been Mm. i think the first time i mentored someone really officially mentored someone was when i was in college Mm. and it was part of it was not the big brother big sister program the official one it was through um uh through a sorority that i i did that and i'll never forget that i would meet the young girl on on saturday mornings Mm -hmm. and that was the first time I realized that when you're giving to someone on that level, you're actually the person who walks away with more. Yes, it that's hit true. me because I always felt like, gosh, did I give her enough? But right. I walk, and I think it was because of the way I felt. Mm-hmm. In my pouring into her, she was actually pouring into me because in mm. my giving her, I discovered so many things about myself. About yeah. And I think that is why um, I kind of made it a lifelong Mm -hmm. uh, journey for myself where I always am a mentor and I always have a mentor. Right. Right. And it kind of keeps me level. Yes. Because I always use the expression that the absolute worst place in the world to operate is within your own head. Mm. Because (laughs) yeah, Yeah, you have no... The point of reference is all about you and, right. and, and to live and, and to lead a successful or very fulfilling life. It can never be about you. You right. get what you need. Right. But it has to be about all the connections that you were put right. here to make. And we all were. Yes. Put here to make connections yes, with other we people. Were. So, yes, um, we were. and you obviously grasp that. So if, yes. if you had to talk about or pinpoint Mm-hmm. The most important lesson, and I want you to think about this for a minute, that you okay. learn uh, through going through that experience. What, what, what would that lesson be? Um, I think I'm just going to just say this before. I think it didn't really hit me until I got to Africa, mm. until I went to Amina Castle in Ghana. So, so that the, was the culmination of that, this Yes, this, that this was journey. the okay. journey. You had to do your final crossover ceremony mm-hmm. into womanhood by going to Africa. And we were in the villages. Um, and what was the reason for them taking you to Africa? I want you to share that with the, with the uh, audience. <laughs> um, 
to go back to where we are from, Mm -hmm. you know, where our people are from. And you hear so many stories about Africa and, you know, ignorant statements Mm -hmm. um, in general. And so they wanted us to go firsthand Mm -hmm. and experience firsthand what it is to be amongst our home. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where we're from. And our people that are still there, of course, Mm -hmm. um, interacting with them, children our age, you know, it was amazing. But I don't, it did not hit me until, like I was saying, we went to... um, in Accra in Ghana, mm-hmm. um, in a castle, and it, it, it was one of the slave castles mm-hmm. where they held, um, you know, all the slaves, and they had the door of no return. Mm. And when I got to that door, I just broke down. I, I just... What was it about it that, that made you break down, do you think? You know, I've been hearing the stories before we went, you know, what the place is all about and what the door of no return was. Mm-hmm. Um, and to actually just be right there, it just, I don't know, something just, it just came over me and I broke down. I, all of us actually kind of broke down. We broke down at the door and also in the, um, in the, the corridor where they actually held, you know, the slaves. And it was like you could still smell like mm. the, st- it was, it's still there. You know, and it just, we just all broke down. Mm-hmm. So at that moment, I understood why my mom put me in that program. Wow. I understood why the women were always on us and mm-hmm. telling us to do all these projects. I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, I get it. I get mm-hmm. what you all wanted me to see. I get it. Mm-hmm. So I think that was my big moment. But it just brought me back to to a place where, even though I was still young, mm-hmm. um, just that, you know, you have to always remember where you came from mm-hmm. to get where you're going. Mm-hmm. And um, my mom's always taught me that, too. Mm-hmm. Just never forget where you come from. Mm-hmm. So. And you, you, you bring to mind, I don't know where I read this or who said it, but mm-hmm. uh, there's a saying that when roots die, a people dies with it. Mm. Our people die with it. Mm-hmm. And you can't live without roots. You can't. You have to know as much Ugh. as you can yes you do about your roots in you order do. for you to, and i think that in a large part that mm-hmm. is one of the biggest problems with our people is mm-hmm. that a lot of us um either don't know right or maybe grew up in families who did not understand the significance of right. that right um i know that with my kids because i grew up in the south mm-hmm. um you know going Going back home, mm. taking them back home, right. and having them around the elders. A lot of them are dead yes. now, but yes. having them around the elders. And I remember a couple saying, "Why are we here?" You know, mm-hmm. she's this old woman. I said, "Sit and listen." That's right. You'd be surprised right. what you get. And now yes. I listen to my kids. They remember the conversations, and some of them were yes. really funny because I had some eccentric, <laughs> um, you know, aunts and uncles in my yeah. family. But they got it. They understood yes. that it's important. You it know, is. to them to be able to reach back and, and to be able to touch those people. It is. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I remember, too, when the first time, uh, I said the first time I went out of the country was Canada. Actually, right. it was to St. Thomas. Okay. And okay. I remember what it felt like to go into a, a, a country, into mm-hmm. a place, and everywhere I looked, the people looked like me. It yeah. did something to me, pride that I have never, ever felt before in my yes. entire life. Now, yes, I'm black. I grew up in my neighborhood was black that I right. grew up in, you know, people around me. Right. But it was the idea that people who were in authority, everything around me as, as, a, as a little girl or right. as a young person, to see that, it made me stand a lot taller. Yeah. I, just, I just felt like, oh, wow. You know, this yes. is pretty cool. Yes. You know, and, and kids need to, to feel that. They do. Um, so you, you really do. were blessed to have been able I, to experience I, that. Definitely. Now, let me ask mm. you, is this program still going on? And if so, are you contributing yes. in any way to make sure that other people, that are you paying it forward and making sure that you, the, you the, help the next the generation? The program, it is still going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't gotten into it um, mm-hmm. right now. It's coming. Um, I... It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Um, because I, you know what I suspect? I suspect that you said you 
it really hit you when you went through it that did. door of, of no return. I think it's really going to hit you when you go back as a teacher. There's still something that you still haven't gotten yet. You don't I get like it that. until you teach. That's true. It's when you give that it back true. that it really hits you like, it wow. Because when, yeah. you, you know, when you're receiving a gift, it's like, oh, wow, this is awesome. This feels good. <laughs> right. But it's when you take the gift that you have and right. you pour it into someone else that you really, really get it. Mm -hmm. So I predict, <laughs> I'm not putting any pressure on you, <laughs> but I predict that Amber Rose has a... Um, Oh, Gina. Uh, Gina Rose. <laughs> no, Amber I know. Amber Rose. Oh my goodness. Amber Rose needs to be married to Kanye West, Amber Rose. Oh Lord. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but, hi Amber. <laughs> that was a slip, a Freudian slip. I don't know why we talking oh, about Amber Rose. Oh my goodness. She's been in the news lately though, a um, lot. I'm sorry. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> okay. I am so sorry. No, Gina, okay. I got it. Uh, I'm sorry. Say, say what you were getting ready to say. No, that's all I'm saying. That is too funny. That is funny. Yeah, maybe I just read her name or something, and you got that little melodic thing going on there. So we are getting very close to the end of our mm. interview this morning, and uh, I have had so much fun with Me you. Too. You are uh, an amazing young woman. Thank you. Doing a lot of amazing things. So if Thank people you. want to find out about any upcoming performances, mm -hmm. and I suspect after watching, you'd be surprised when people see this show, mm -hmm. folks get calls. Ask Chelsea Green. She's gotten so many calls really? from people like, I oh. saw you on Metro Magazine. You know, and some oh, of them even wow. call me. How can I get in touch with her? Oh, that's awesome. So we have a big following here uh, of people Thank looking you. to hire, you know, folks to come and sing or do whatever. Okay. So uh, be prepared. So um, I'm, I'm ready. How would they get in touch with you? And mm -hmm. um, outside of music, if there are things, for instance, uh, like the teaching that you do, let mm -hmm. folks know how they can reach out and touch you. Okay. Um, well, first, you all can go to my website, ginarosemusic.com. G I N A R O S E music.com. Not Amber. Um, not Amber, <laughs> but hi, Amber. <laughs> oh, gosh, that is too funny. Um, I'm big on social media. Um, okay. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram under Miss Gina Rose, M S G I N A R O S E. And um, if you wanted to book me or, you know, reach out to me, you can always email me at grosemusic at gmail.com. Perfect. Yes. And if for some reason you missed that and you can't remember how to get in touch, you can always hit us here yes. at Metro Magazine, and I'd be more than happy to pass that information oh, thank along. Thank you. Thank you so much for oh, gracing thank you our for set. having me. I, this, this has been an honor and a well, pleasure to you. talk to you. It's been thank an awesome you. opportunity. So I thank you. Thank you for having you me. You are today. quite welcome. That's what we're here for. Thank so you. that's going to wrap it up for us <laughs> this week on Metro Magazine. And this has been Bonnie and Gina, not Amber Rose. <laughs> and we will, um, I'll see you on the flip side.